Have you ever wanted to make your videos look more like film, but you don't have a film camera? And even if you did, you have no idea how to use a film camera? So you try to color grade your footage to make it look more film-like, but all it does is turn out looking more like a 2010 Instagram filter. Yeah, we've all been there. If that's the case, then you definitely need to check out Dehancer Pro. Dehancer Pro is a film emulation plugin that you can use in Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and my personal favorite, Final Cut Pro, which we're gonna be taking a look at today. Before we get started, I need to let you in on something here. You see, the team at Dehancer reached out to me after seeing one of my videos, and they asked me if I would be interested in trying out Dehancer and reviewing it for them, so they ended up giving me this license. Now, that being said, they're not paying me to make this video, and they have no input on what I say. They just want some real, honest feedback, and so that's exactly what you're going to get here. Oh, and one more thing that you can get is 10% off your Dehancer purchase if you use my code EH10, which will be down in the description as well. And if you use that code, I get to feed my little doggy Luna, and so, you know, go ahead and use it. So like I said, Dehancer is a film emulation plugin, so it works inside of your video editing software of choice. I'm gonna be using Final Cut Pro today, and this is a super powerful tool that goes above and beyond just another LUT. I honestly don't understand how it works and how they were able to get this product to life, but it's super cool. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. Spoiler alert. It's freaking awesome. So here we are inside of Final Cut Pro. I have some test footage that I took uh, the other day um, on my Sony ZV-E10. I was using my Sony 18 to 105 f4 lens, and I had on a um, and I had on a variable ND filter from why am I blanking on the name? Freewell, um, one of their their uh, new two-in-one circular polarizer, three to seven stop. Um, so. Got a couple clips here that we'll go ahead and just grade with Dehancer. So um, again, Dehancer, it's it's an effect. So you'll find it over here in the effects and you'll scroll down and you're gonna look for film emulation and there it is. So what you can do, you can just drag this onto each of these clips, but what I prefer to do is create um, an adjustment layer and then put it on there. So I have it as a shortcut, uh, control shift T to get my adjustment layer up. And we'll go ahead and we'll just put adjustment layers for each of these clips. Okay, so let's just take a look at this first clip here. I thought this was kind of cool. Got the American flag in the background and this guy here uh, on his lunch break eating a bag of chips. <laughs> so what we'll do, we'll go ahead, we'll drag the Dehancer um, effect onto that clip and you can see it kind of looks like garbage but we're going to make it look a lot better now something that i like to do inside final cut pro specifically um is because there's a there's a long list of stuff here this is all dehancer over here on the right so it can be a little overwhelming at first but we're going to go through these you know kind of one by one and what i like to do is i like to double click up here and that's gonna make this um, the the this tab here full screen or like full height, <laughs> and so it's just easier to see everything. And then I'm also going to um, make this a bit. Oops, I'm going to make this a bit wider, and that way when I move the sliders within Dehancer, it's moving them a little bit more gradually. So that's just a little pro tip for you there. Okay, so. I'm just going to go ahead and hide everything so you can just kind of see all the different tabs that we have to work with here. And we're just gonna go through one at a time. So now there's a couple different ways that you can get started here. Uh, in the input tab, if and, and I also shot this footage in S-Log3, so that's gonna be important here. Um, so you, if your footage was just shot in regular picture profile, Rec. 709, you can just use the Rec. 709 and go from there. But they also have a way that you can choose your camera. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So you can select the vendor. I have the Sony, come down to camera. Now they don't have the ZV-E10, uh, but the sensor in the ZV-E10 is almost the exact same sensor in the A6400. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. Then you can select your format for the picture profile. I shot an S-Log3, S-Gamut3 dot Cine. And we can see that already looks a lot better. Now below that we have these other kind of corrections here. Now this is to, again, this is a film emulation plugin which is supposed to emulate the analog film development process. 
which I know nothing about. I'm starting to learn a little bit more about it, getting to know Dehancer and what these tools do and how they emulate that analog process. But essentially what this does is this is correcting the footage. It's not correcting any of the effects that you're applying to the footage, if that makes sense. So you've got exposure compensation, temperature control, tint compensation, um, and this D fringe here. So I don't actually use a D fringe. I think it's, uh, to my understanding, it's to kind of fix chromatic or aberration, but it also said something online that it kind of affects some of the other effects like the halation and the bloom. So I haven't been using that effect myself. So one other thing we'll go ahead and do here, we'll go ahead and pull up uh, my video scopes. And for this, I typically just use the Luma waveform. And honestly, right now for this clip, I think we're just gonna leave it as is. But you know, one thing that I like to do when I'm learning something new is I just grab every slider and rip it up and down and just see kind of what it does. But honestly, the exposure looks pretty good here. The temperature, maybe we'll warm it up just a little bit. Maybe it's a little green, so we'll bring that a little towards more magenta there. And yeah, that looks pretty good there. All right, so moving on to the film developer section here. So you wanna make sure that you have this box checked. Um, and you just wanna make sure you have that checked for all of these sections here, otherwise, it won't work. So we have this contrast boost here, so we can crank that up a little bit to increase the contrast, down to make it a little less contrasty. I kind of like a little bit of contrast, so we'll turn that up just a little bit. And then here we have the gamma correction. So uh, what this does is it determines how much the midtones are shifted towards the shadows or the highlights. And this only works if the contrast boost is a value greater than zero. So let's just see what happens when we shift that to the right. We can see the highlights kind of getting a little brighter there. And here the shadows are getting a little brighter there. So I'm gonna leave that at about zero. Uh, now moving into the color separation here. So this is a cool, really cool tool. What this does is it desaturates the most saturated um, colors. So over here, I'm seeing a little bit of green. Let's see if how that affects sort of the greens if we pull that down. Uh, yeah, I'm not really seeing honestly a whole lot of different here, so we're just gonna leave that as it is. All right, so moving on to the film section here. So this is the part of Dehancer that really sets itself apart is these different film profiles. So as you can see, there's a ton in here. I think there's like 63 different um, films to choose from, which can be kind of overwhelming because one, there's a lot of options, and two, with all the other settings and stuff to choose from, you can literally get like infinite combinations here. So what I would suggest you do, just come in here and start playing around with some different ones. I've been really liking um, Kodak Gold 200, Kodak Kodak Portra 400, um, but you know, I kinda wanna maybe use something different here, maybe a, a Fujifilm one. And again, I know that these mean, I, I think like the D stands for like daylight, T for tungsten, but again, I don't really know much about film. So I'm just getting in here and playing around with things. So let's check out, let's try this Fujifilm Instax Digital Intermediate. Haven't played with this one yet. So let's go ahead and check that out. So after you select the film profile, there's this push pull effect, which I don't fully understand, but essentially real film behaves differently depending on how much um, light hits it during, you know, when you're when you're filming. And so by playing around with the push and pull, you're gonna get a little different look coming out of it. Ooh, I kinda like that, that negative value there a little bit. Yeah, that's looking cool. Okay, so next we are gonna jump down to the expand tool. So um, the expand tool allows for even more contrast and Dehancer suggests that after you select your film, you go down to expand and here you can select your black point and your white point to, um, again, just get a little more contrast and you know, you, you'll probably come back here and play around with things, but let's go ahead and maybe let's raise that white point a little bit, take a look over at my scopes and yeah, that looks good there. Maybe we'll raise that black point just a little bit for a little less contrast. And with that off and with that on, I think that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so then we'll go back up to the film compression here. So this is actually a pretty 
cool, cool tool uh, that has to do with the highlights. So again, with film, the highlights react differently and you can sort of push your highlights a little brighter when shooting film compared to digital without them clipping. So this sort of allows you to, if you have blown out highlights or your highlights are a little too bright, you can sort of get some of that back um, with this film compression tool. Now my highlights, are, they look they look pretty good here. Whoops, gotta make sure that we hit that enabled. Um, now if we go ahead and just move this impact slider, we can see those highlights are like the sky, just getting like, just getting a little darker, which again, doesn't really affect this image. It's like, not, there's not a lot of detail there to see. Um, but you can also then change the white point as like how bright that those highlights are. The tonal range kind of has to do with um, how far into the mid tones that you're affecting. So yeah, I think somewhere like that looks pretty good. All right, I'm kind of liking the way this looks so far. Okay, so moving into the print tab. So this is allegedly, to my knowledge, the final step in the analog process of developing film. And there's a couple different options to choose from here. So you can select different um, film stocks to print on. So you can just go linear, there's Cineon Film Log, Fuji Film, um, 3513 print film, Kodak 2383 print film, and the Kodak Endura glossy paper. To my knowledge, Kodak and Fujifilm are what they use to print um, like movies on. And this, Kodak Endura glossy paper is like what they you'd print photos on. Um, so since we picked the Fujifilm film profile, let's see what the Fujifilm print looks like. Let's just go through all these, the Kodak, Kodak Endura glossy paper the Cineon film log. I kind of like just the linear look. So we're not even gonna mess with this, but you do have the ability here to kind of, um, you know, make some final adjustments to the exposure, the tonal contrast, and the color density. So color density is kind of cool. It's like kind of like saturation, but it works a little differently than that. I'm gonna actually raise that a little bit, bring a little bit of that pop uh, out of the flag there. All right, moving into the color head. So here um, we have the color head. So this to me kind of reminds me of like a hue saturation curve. So, um, you know, we have the yellows and the blues so we can bring things more towards yellow. You gotta enable it first. Um, <laughs> or more towards the blues. I'm kind of liking this like bluer look. Uh, and then magentas and greens, maybe add a little bit of magenta in there. And maybe, maybe just a hint of that red. And then here we have the shadows tone, the mid-tones tone, and the highlights tone. So this sort of like shifts where that color goes in the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights uh, respectively. But I'm honestly kind of liking the way that this looks so far, so I'm not even gonna mess with that. Okay, now moving on to film grain. So this is where Dehancer really starts to slow your playback down. So right now my computer, I'm working with a 2021 M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, uh, just sort of like the base setting at that. And for editing in Final Cut Pro, it works really well. I'm very satisfied with it. But for <laughs> Dehancer here, it's when you start to use the film grain, the halation, and the bloom, it really starts to slow your playback down. Like if I even just try to play this right here, like you'll see it's just sort of glitching out there. Like you look at the flags and stuff. So um, so just be aware of that. Now, the reason that it, these parameters slow down your computer is that it, like the way that film grain works in traditional film is it's not just like it's not just like you slap it over top of it and that's not, not how it's working here in Dehancer. Uh, Dehancer is actually regenerating the image to recreate how f grain actually works in the film process. So that's why it slows things down. It's literally regenerating the image um, as it's trying to play it back. So there's a few different um, choices to select from here. So there's 8, 16, 35, and 65 millimeter at a couple different ISO levels, which you can choose from. So 65 is sort of the least noticeable where eight millimeter is gonna be a lot more noticeable. So you can kind of play around there, just get a quick start, pick one of those and, and, and be good to go. Or if you wanna fine tune it, then you can like sort of select that and then come to custom. And then you have tons of different um, solution or 
options here so you need to really fine tune this to to however you look i typically just been using the drop downs here again um, i'm still relatively new to using this but i kind of like around like the 35 millimeter uh amount that seems to be like just enough without like kind of overdoing it okay moving into halation so halation is the red orange halos that you see around bright light sources especially when their edges are like very high contrast so just like the film grain tool there's a few different options here that you can select um there is again the 8 16 35 and 65 and there's like the regular um setting and then the no rem jet setting the no rem jet setting essentially is just a lot more intense and what's cool about uh the halation here is you can click this mask mode and then you gotta enable it and then you can see where it's affecting your image so right there it's pretty subtle on this uh super 35 now, if I, we go to the no rem jet, you can see how much more um, prevalent it is. So just going from, again, the no rem jet to the regular Super 35, big difference. I kind of like that though. Yeah, that's looking kind of sick. Um, sweet, moving into bloom. So same idea here with the bloom. You have some different, um, you have the eight, 16, 35, and 65 millimeter. Um, and again, 65 is going to be a little more subtle, whereas eight millimeter is going to be a little bit more um, noticeable. And again, they have this mask mode here. And again, with both of these, again, the halation and the bloom, you can start with one of these settings and then go into custom and really fine tune everything. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and just try the 35 millimeter. Mm. Maybe we'll go with the the eight. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's kind of kind of dramatic. So, now there are some other options down here, right? Film damage, film breadth, gate weave, vignette. Um, I don't really use that stuff. Maybe I'll use the vignette a little bit, uh, but. One thing that they do have, which is pretty cool too, is they have this false color. Uh, so you can throw this on here to see if you're underexposing or overexposing, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's just a good, uh, a nice tool to to go in here and just make sure that your footage is looking legit. And then lastly here, there's a LUT generator. So you can, you can go in here and export this as a LUT. I have yet to do this. Um, that's something that I'll play around with and uh, let you know how that works. But if you find a look that you really like, you can just, you know, um, export that as a LUT and it'd probably be a lot easier on the playback of your computer. But typically what I do is I'll bring in my footage, I'll mess with the enhancer, get a look that I like, and then I'll just disable the, um, the adjustment layer that it's on when I'm actually editing and going through and, and doing playbacks and stuff. So you, what you can also do too is save this as an effect preset. So if you really liked this, you know, this Fujifilm look, right, or this Fujifilm Instax with all these settings, you could save that as a preset and then go fine tune it for, for whenever you need to. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another clip here. Um, now that we kind of understand the settings, let's just go ahead and look at Dehancer really quickly and just get a little bit different look. So again, we'll come up here, select the camera, and we'll go ahead and pick, I've really been liking this Kodak Gold 200. We'll go straight to the expand. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. We'll come on down here to print, and maybe we'll try this Kodak 2383 print film. Ooh, that's giving it a nice, nice little retro vibe. Now it's looking maybe a little contrasty, so let's bring some of that down here with this. And actually, let's see if we can maybe bring some of that those highlights back using the film compression. Whoops, got to turn that on. Yeah, I like that look. And we'll come down here to the color head. Maybe make this a hair yellow. Whoops, got to enable that. Okay, we'll come on down to the film grain here. I like the 35 millimeter. 
Let's throw on some halation. Let's throw on that mask mode, kind of see where we're getting affected right now. Um, let's maybe let's make it go a little more dramatic. Let's see if that's too much. Yeah, that's too much. And let's try maybe the 16 millimeter. Whoops. Mask mode. Let's come in here. Now let's customize this. And we'll go. We'll raise that source limiter just a little bit. So it's not quite as intense. Turn off that mask mode and that, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's turn on some bloom. I think that uh, maybe, yeah, I like that. We'll leave that just like that. And boom, there we go. Pretty sweet. We'll head to one more real quick here. Uh, I thought this, this uh, Napa auto parts looked pretty sick. Just kind of like vintage retro vibes. But let's maybe just pick a different film stock just for the heck of it. This Portra 400. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Now, the highlights look a little blown out, which I don't hate. But let's just play with the film compression. And see if we can just kind of bring that back a little bit. I don't want to bring it back too much. It looks like it's kind of falling apart there, the sky. Um, let's maybe bring down this contrast even more. And yeah, there we go. I think that looks pretty sweet. So as you can see, there are a ton of features when it comes to Dehancer Pro and literally limitless options that you can get with between the 60 plus different film stocks with all the different tools beyond that. You can have literally limitless options. So let's take a quick look here at the iOS app. So we can go ahead and just send this over to Dehancer and it works super sweet. Again, one thing that I really like about it, let's just go, we'll go edit, we'll go reset. Um, one thing that I really like about this, it's got all the same tabs as you know we just went over in Final Cut. But one thing that I really like is when you go to select a film is that it's gonna take a second to load here, but you can kind of preview the film stocks before actually selecting it. Whereas in Final Cut, you have to like click on each one and then go back to the menu and click on it to like kind of preview it. So that's something I'd love to see uh, as an update in the plugin. But other than that, you know, it, they're both pretty sick. So let's just go ahead. I'll just put on a previous edit that I did. Or they do have a bunch of presets. I mean, that looks a little intense, but pretty sick. The iOS app is is pretty sweet. I'm excited to play with that more. Um, it handles pictures really well, uh, exports them really fast. But one thing that I did find, I tried just like a nine second video and it took like two minutes to export from my phone. Um, but that's also something that you'll notice with when using the Final Cut Pro plugin is that it's pretty heavy on your computer and it also takes a while to export, but the result's sick, so worth it in my opinion. So they actually just released Dehancer 4.0 for iOS, and they've got some new crop tools, like 18 new presets, and just some all around various fixes and improvements. So go check that out too. So that wraps up the Dehancer Pro review. I honestly think that it's a fantastic tool personally. And if you're someone who likes that filmic sort of retro look, then you should definitely check out Dehancer Pro because it's the best tool that I know of to get that look. Now, I'll be honest, when I first saw the price tag of $449 for a lifetime license, I thought that was pretty steep, especially considering all the other equipment and gear that goes into just making videos, even if it's just for fun. But after playing around with Dehancer Pro and reading up on what each and every tool does, I think that the price 
accurately reflects the value that you get with this product. And the great thing is, is that they do offer a free trial. So you can go ahead, download the free trial, play around with the features yourself, see if it's something that you'd want to use or not. And then you can decide to pick up the full license. And again, use code EH10 for 10% off your purchase if you do decide to buy it. But that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. We'll go ahead and see you in the next video, which you know I'm gonna be grading with the answer.